Well, welcome everybody. Um, well, hello, Linda. So you've joined us, and uh, I'm really glad that everybody's here. This is going to be a fun night, and uh, I'm really doing. A, we actually did this webinar a few years ago, but I just felt like I wanted to do it again. And, and you know, it's this is kind of fun, but it's also serious uh, in relationships. And really, the context of this as Christians is uh, I'm really talking in the context of marriage. I am talking in the context of men and women um, and marriage, okay? So um, I'm not talking about uh, anything premarital. This is after marriage. This is the, this is the context of this course, okay? Um, if anybody has a camera and love to turn it on, we would love to see your pretty face, Steve is saying. So, Lord, thank you for tonight. We thank you for uh, just the privilege, Father, of being able to share, Father. And just uh, we just invite you to be with us and bless those that are here. Bless those that are on their way to log in. In Jesus' name, amen. So, you know, this is uh, men are microwaves, women are crockpots. We have to be really careful with that because, uh, uh, hello, Alex. We had um, somebody say at one time, are you saying crackpots? I said, no, crockpots slow cookers okay you want to get that straight and uh, so welcome Alex I'm glad you're here and let's just move on this again this is a, a fun fun night but actually if you are married uh, or planning on being married this actually can change your life all right romance always involves understanding the opposite sex and you know, and we tend to struggle with that. You know, we, we say we know women or women say they know men, but, you know, do they really? And sometimes communication is so difficult, I'm amazed that we're able to uh, get along at all with the opposite sex. Remember the book that came out some years ago, men are from, uh, what is it, men are, women are from Venus, men are from Mars. Really, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, but I want to talk about, about this principle here and honestly, as a guy, and I'm going to pick on guys a little bit more tonight because most guys that I know, including myself years ago, did not get this principle. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. And if you get this principle, um, this can really, really enrich your romantic life and your marriage, okay? Um, now, your wife may be on another planet, but if you want intimacy, you need to understand life on her planet, okay? And, you know, she is different, and, and God created her to be different. One of the sayings that I have um, in marriage counseling is we should always embrace the differences. Remember the old saying, if you're both alike, one of you wouldn't be needed. So, you know, I don't want to marry myself. I want to marry someone different. And my wife and I are extremely different, but we have come to learn that we really do need the differences, and they we benefit each other. Now, we can irritate each other, that's true, but the differences are very important, okay? Um, I'm supposed to, oh, I need to adjust my camera. Is it like too, is that better? Is that better? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I got you. Okay, thank you for that, Steve. So your wife may be on another planet, but if you want intimacy, You've got to understand life on her planet. And let's be fair here. Hey, you're, the husband may be on another planet, but if you want intimacy, you need to understand life on his planet. So when we need to understand men, and men, we need to understand women. This is a, actually, this next slide is based on a true story. Um, this is a book about what most men know about romance. And um, it's an interesting book there. If you notice that the pages appear to be blank. True story. My wife, some years ago, went to a bookstore and found a book. And, and the book was called What Men Know About Romance, or Everything That Men Know About Romance. And she thought it was very interesting. And I uh, had a beautiful cover on it. She picked it up and discovered that it was, um, it was blank on the inside. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, well, that's kind of true. Uh, that's kind of true. I mean, that's a journalization. But so like I said, I'm going to be a little bit harder on men, but, um, you, know, you know, we need to understand each other. Let's just get into this. You see, microwaves cook food fast and easy. 
and the food gets hot very quickly. Now, guys, you know, um, I don't want to say that this is a, a webinar about sex. To me, this is a webinar about intimacy. This is a webinar, and of course, uh, intimacy in, in the context of marriage can lead to sex, and I'm talking about godly intimacy. But microwaves cook food fast and easy, and, and, and like I said, you know, they get, food gets hot very quickly. But you know, crock pots make delicious food, but they cook it very slowly. When the food is ready, it's just as hot as the food from the microwave. Now, isn't that an interesting principle there? So the microwave can warm up food in 60 seconds. The crock pot may take four hours. Four hours. Now, I know this sounds like, you know, where am I going? But honestly, I want you to understand this really has a lot to do with romance and the difference between men and women. And it's a huge difference. And we really need to get this difference and learn how to embrace this difference and appreciate this difference instead of, you know, being clueless, you know, about the differences. I've been blessed to travel to um, several nations. And, you know, when you're, when you're in another country, uh, it's very important to understand the culture and the way things work and the, and what, and what, and how to communicate with that culture and what could offend them and what uh, might not offend them. And it's very, 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 you know, important to, to understand these, you know, sort of basic things. So the same thing applies in relationships. Romance for a woman begins early in the day and involves every aspect of her day and time with her loved one. And this is what guys don't understand because we tend to be microwaves and we can get romantic pretty quickly and it generally doesn't even matter what kind of day we've had or what sort of stress we're under you know if the mood strikes us and you know things look right and mm -hmm, yeah huh? okay yeah we can we can we can do this this sounds really good I'm I'm ready but it doesn't work that way with the ladies now ladies please you know, you know, please help me here. Um, if, if with my wife, if, if I really want a, a super romantic evening, evening, yeah, I need to start with her early in the day and we need to have a, a good day together. With women, literally, it can start at breakfast time just doing something courteous or kind for your wife. It takes... It's it's the whole. I used my expression. I like to use is with the women's. It's the whole enchilada. With men, not necessarily so. Not that we're not romantic. We can be okay, but it is different. Um, romance for the man doesn't depend on the events of his day and doesn't take him much time. So, in other words, I can have a stressful day, a hard day, a day that's just not going so well for me. But you know what, you know, I can see my wife and things just look right. And hey, you know, I can overcome that pretty quick. All right. And you may understand what I'm talking about. But for my wife, Christy, you know, for her, romance is her love language. I need to know her love language. It's going to, if I want romance with her in the evening, I need quality time. She wants quality time with me. She wants me to, to spend some focused time with her uh, because that's her, her love language. My wife's love language also is touch. Now, not sexual touch, but touch. I need to hold my wife's hand, give her plenty of hugs all day long and just be there for her. I remember once um, we were coming home from a dinner with a, with a couple and something happened that kind of upset my wife and we're driving home from dinner and me, being a professional counselor, began to counsel my wife. And then as the minister, I began to minister to my wife in the car. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. <laughs> my little sweet wife, after I finished my speeches and telling her exactly how to overcome her inner hurts and her, you know, her, uh, her, her repressed memories that were surfacing because of what was triggered that evening, 
and you know, explaining to her how to overcome this and you know how to work through these particular this particular issue, she looked at me and she said something I'll never forget. She said, Ray, I just need you to be my husband right now. I don't need you to be my counselor or my minister. And I thought, wow. And what she was telling me was, you know, I just need you to be with me. Just be there for me. Don't don't preach to me. Don't counsel me. Just be a husband. And sometimes, see, that's what romance is. We just need to learn how to be that husband and be there for them and be there for our wives, okay? Not try to fix them, not try to correct them, not, not try to use a whole lot of logic and show them the logical solutions to these problems, but sometimes it's just to care and, and, to, and to love and, and, to, and to hold and just let them know that you're, you're there, okay? So, but a man, you know, hey, that's great stuff, but that doesn't necessarily help me. See, it's been said that when it comes to sex, men are like light switches. Literally, like, okay, I'm good. I'm ready. Let's, you know, hey, let's go. All right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's an old, uh, there's an old saying I read. This is actually a pastor wrote this book. Um, they were talking about sex and marriage, and one man commented. He said, "Hey, it's free. It's fun. Let's do it." You know, in marriage. So, <laughs> and sometimes that's our attitude. Hey, I'm married. It's legal. We can do this thing. It's okay. God blesses it. Hey, but come on, baby. Let, let's do this thing. You know, we just, well, this doesn't always work with the ladies. And you guys can, the ladies can tell me amen or uh-huh or be quiet. Okay. You, you, you flick the switch, the man is turned on. And it doesn't take much for us. It, 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 it really doesn't. But... You see, problems arise when the woman doesn't feel the same way. And you see, here's the problem, and again, this can be really serious. So the man, you know, he, he he's ready, but the woman hasn't had that warm up. She hasn't had that day with you. She hasn't. You haven't been there with her all day. You haven't met her needs. You haven't called her and, and, and checked on her. You haven't, you know done some nice things for her you haven't spent some quality time with her whatever it is that, that floats her boat you see you you've got this light switch she's she's doing the crock pot thing with you and if you don't understand that what's going to happen with the man is the man's going to feel rejected you know he's he's not the guy you don't really care about me i just don't you know i don't i don't get this and what's the problem here you know i'm your husband and then the woman's feeling like, uh, man, you don't really care about me either. You just think I'm an object and you don't really care about my feelings. You don't care about my heart. We have to understand these principles. Um, and we and also marriage is give and take. There's times when the husband's going to need, he's just, you're going to have to be really long and slow and take your time. And it literally, if you want a romantic evening, it may take several days of warm up to get to that evening. But there's also times where the wife needs to understand men don't always work that way, okay? All right, so you know, we'll talk about how to overcome this. A woman is a responder. My wife preaches this to me. She teaches me this all the time. She responds internally or externally to all the events of her day, and these events will affect her desire for intimacy. Now, men, we're different. Yeah, we can get so stressed out we don't feel like doing anything except you know, vegging out in a recliner uh, with a remote control watching the NBA playoffs. That's about as much as we've got. But women respond. This is why uh, I think it's important, call me old-fashioned, for the man to be the initiator. You know, I think women like to have, for a man to initiate, for, for a man to pursue them. But the pursuit with a woman needs to be a long term. It's, it's not a sprint. You know, it's a jog. It's a, it's a long-term pursuit. And if a man can learn how to romantically woo his wife all day long, I promise you, by the time it's time for Betty by later in the evening, it's going to be a really good evening, okay? So many men don't get this principle, okay? All right. Um, yeah, well... 
if you haven't heard, and we, we'll talk about this, Steve mentioned maybe going through some of the love languages, and I, I will talk about that tonight, if you haven't heard about the, the five love languages. Most people have, but if you haven't, we'll touch on that tonight. A man responds to the events of his day, but typically that doesn't stop a man from desiring intimacy, okay? Um, sometimes a man will be so stressed out from work, so you know they feel, hey shoot this is I want I just I want I want to get it all with my wife because that's just going to fix everything. It's not going to work that way with the woman. Okay. We'll talk about we're going to talk about um, some different types of romance as we get into this too. When a man understands how to move slowly and do thoughtful things for his wife throughout the day, she will respond to his desire for intimacy. And you know. Um, if you at work, you know, call your wife. Just tell her you're thinking about her. Send her, send her a nice text. Just do some little extra things for her. Turn the TV off in the evening and just say, "Hey, tell me about how you're feeling. How, how was your day? Let's 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 talk. Maybe with your wife, she appreciates you just doing the dishes, cleaning up the kitchen for her, just being there for her." Um, Understanding the love language of your wife is really going to help. Go help a lot, and we'll, we should get into that in just a second. But you've got to, we, men, we've got to learn how to be patient and move slow. And women, we have to learn sometimes that we're not, we can't do that very well. Okay, you see, a healthy relationship have focus on the other person's needs. Scripture says this: Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Philippians 2 4. We, we're not to just look at it's not just my need, but it is her needs that matter. And the problem with men is we get all turned on, and really, pretty much all we're thinking about is our needs. But you see, that's not scriptural. It's if, if we're willing to give it all to meet her needs, most women will give it all to meet your needs. But we have to meet her needs needs, not her needs the way we think her needs should be, but her needs the way she defines her needs to be. Amen? Amen. Lust is selfish because, you see, lust is about personal satisfaction without concern for the other person. And, and you know, men, you know, we men struggle with lust, and I think lusting after your own wife is a, it can be a really good thing. Lust after somebody who's not you're not married to can be a bad thing, but generally when a man is lusting after a woman, he's thinking about what he wants, what he can do, how he will feel, what will happen to him. It's not really about the other person at all. And so lust is very selfish. Lust is a very um, self-centered, um, self-centered way to to romance. So how do we solve the differences? between microwaves and crockpots. We want to talk about that. Um, now, as we get into the differences, let me, let me just talk a little about love languages. Everybody speaks love in a different way, and everybody receives love in a different way. Um, I think it was Chapman who came out with a book, The Five Love Languages, but basically the five love languages are um, Let's see, words of affirmation, acts of service, physical touch, quality time, and gifts. Now, if your wife or your husband's love language is gifts, and you don't give them gifts, no matter what you do, they will never feel loved, and intimacy is going to be a problem. If your spouse's love language is words of affirmation, and you don't affirm them with your words, no matter what you do, you're going to have a problem. Though here's where, with the love languages, here is the problem. And I will say this, 80 or 90% of the people that I know tend to speak love according to their own love language. For instance, um, I've got a pastor friend of mine whose love, whose love language is serving. If he, he just loves service, doing practical things. And that's the way he feels love, because somebody does practical things for him. Well, I remember one day he told me, he said, Ray, I don't understand it. I cleaned out the garage, I, I cleaned out the garage, I mowed the grass, I weeded the flower bed, I trimmed the hedges, and my wife didn't seem to care at all. 
And I said, well, what, what's her love language? He goes, huh? I said, well, that's your love language. Well, yeah, but look what all I did for her. I go, I go, well, you know, Pastor, that's great what you did for her, but that's not how your wife receives love. There's nothing wrong with what you did, but if you expect your wife to feel loved for your love language, which is not her love language, it's like going down, you know, going into an Hispanic community and speaking English and nobody understands you. Well, just because it's the way you feel love doesn't mean it's the way your spouse feels love. So the, the deal is, you must understand if your wife's love language is quality time, if you're not spending quality time with her, you're going to have a problem. If your wife's love language, and this is vice versa, same for men, if her love language is physical touch and you don't give her hugs and little massages, no matter what you do, she's not going to feel loved. Okay? If it is acts of service, you better go mow the grass and clean the garage or she's not going to feel loved. And uh, I remember... A story once of a, a man and a woman they went through a they went through a terrible divorce and uh, the woman after the divorce looked at the man uh, this is a true story and she said you know all I ever wanted from you is just to pour me a glass of tea and I, and I heard this story and I thought wow and then I realized later on when I studied the love language what she was saying was my love language was a little, I was acts of service. Why didn't you ever show me love by doing an act of service for me? And it contributed to their divorce. If the love language for your spouse is words, you need to give them encouraging, loving words. If it's quality time, you've got to spend the time. If it's gifts, you've got to give the gifts. If it's uh, acts of service, go mow the grass, clean the house, okay? But you have to know what it is and remember here's the catch I just I don't want to sound redundant here but if it's your love language it doesn't mean it's their love language this is because this is the way you feel loved so you want to give love the way you feel loved it's not the way she feels loved so you got to get your love language correct okay amen The microwavable man needs to learn self-control and patience. Now, this is how we solve the problem. He'll be very glad that he waited, okay, if he can do this. This is what the typical guys need to do. However, the slow-cooking woman needs to understand and have patience with her hot and ready-to-go man. Now, so what do we do here? You know what, ladies? There's sometimes you need to let your man be a microwave. Just give that gift to him. And, and man, let your wife be the crock pot. Give that gift to her, knowing that this is what's going to please her and make it for a great romantic time. But there may be a time when you, wives, you can say, you know what, I know my husband's a microwave. Okay, I will, I'll give him a gift. Okay, because it's just the way we are and we, we care about each other. We want to meet each other's needs. Okay, so we got to understand this. And you'll be surprised. And all I've done marriage counseling for many years. This sounds like a very simple, obvious premise here. I promise you, I think every marriage counseling session I've ever done, the couple had no idea about the crockpot microwave syndrome. But once it was shown to them, they went, oh, yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. And it really, really does help. Solutions for the wife. Sometimes it's good to have spontaneous sex with your husband. He will love it. Most men are okay with that. They're, they're fine with that. Okay? It's not going to bother them one bit. Okay? However, for the husband, put aside your burning desires and romance your wife all day long by doing small things that mean a lot. And you know what means a lot to your wife. You know what, what she likes. You know, you, you know, like for instance me, one thing I like to do is buy flowers. My wife loves pink roses, okay? But one of the fun things I like to do is buy her either a single pink rose or a few pink roses just for no occasion at all. It doesn't have to be your birthday or Valentine's Day or our anniversary, just 
just be thinking about her, you know, just buy her some flowers, you know, for no reason, just random act of kindness, call it, okay? My wife's love language is physical touch. And uh, now, guys, when we talk about physical touch, we're not talking about sexual touch. We're talking about just physical touch. For instance, I found out that one of my things, I, I kid with my wife, and she'll be doing the dishes, and I'll come up behind her, and I'll say, Christy, I'm going to help you do the dishes. She goes, you are? And I go, yeah. And I start to massage her shoulders as she's doing the dishes, and she goes, oh, I love the way you help me do the dishes. <laughs> And it's just a little shoulder massage. It's no big deal for me, but it means a lot for her because I know that's her love language, okay? When we're in church together, we hold hands. When we drive in the car, we hold hands. You know, am I a big touchy-feely guy? Not necessarily, but I know that my wife likes that. Sometimes we're just walking through the mall or shopping. We just reach out and hold hands. That's her love language, and I want her to feel loved. And so I, I, I give that to her, okay? And if I would do that love language all day long, by the time the evening comes, it's really going to be some really good love, okay? <laughs> Amen. Um, let's see. Got a comment from Steve here. Microwaves can be programmed to, <laughs> to time cooking. Yeah, <laughs> they can be programmed or time cooking. That is true. That is true. And sometimes we need that programming and, and time cooking. Try to meet each other's needs through loving, understanding, and quality communication. Every you know, every book on intimacy you'll you'll ever read will talk about communication and try to literally uh, at times just have open conversations with your wife, with your husband. You know, what is it that really makes you feel loved? What is it I can do? that will please you and I will tell you something if you're meeting their needs and you and you focus on meeting their needs I promise you they're not gonna have so much a problem with meeting your needs and so if you want your needs met you meet their needs and I, I think as a man we should be the instigators we should be the initiators of this okay so um, you know and romance is different for, for different people. You know, your wife may be the candlelight dinner, you know, with a little serenade going on by the table. Or maybe your wife is, uh, is, is like something different. Maybe a long walk is what's romance for your wife or the husband. You have to find out, you know, what it is, what works for them. Now, there's types of romance that I want to... There's three types of um, of romance that can uh, that work, you know, in marriage. There's the fast food romance, <laughs> and you know, fast food is you you know you go in, your food's ready in a few minutes, um, doesn't cost you a whole lot, and um, you know, men we we kind of can relate to this this fast food. Um, what if what's the old saying if uh, if I am what I eat, I must be fast and cheap. <laughs> Don't pay no attention to that. But that is a type of romance. What I call the fast food romance. That's the on the spot, spontaneous. Um, everything's not exactly perfect. It's just a little spontaneous love. But then there's the home cooked romance. Okay, the home cooked romance is that's the romance where. Um, you know, typically you are at home. It may be a little more of a routine. It's after the kids go to bed or uh, it's later in the evening when everything is quiet and you have some time together and you're, you know, you're in bed, you're talking, you're sharing your day and, and you know, you have your, your, you know, your typical romantic time at home. And that's a good type of romance. Then there's a, the third type which is gourmet. Gourmet is you have rented a cottage. Now I live in Florida. Let's say you are in a bed and breakfast on Anna Maria Island, uh, which is off of Bradenton, Florida, on a beautiful uh, white sand beach with you know emerald green water, and you can look out your door and see it. And you have got this little beach cottage, and you've just you spent the day on the beach and. 
swimming and sun tanning and you went out to a nice dinner and you know you've come home to a, to a beautiful quiet you know little cabin little cottage you can hear the waves you can hear the waves crashing on the beach and there you are all alone and you maybe have a couple of candles that's gourmet okay and all three are okay you know when you eat food there's times when fast food is okay and there's times when home cooking is pretty good stuff but there's times when you you know you go for the gourmet and I encourage you to do all three have some fast food and I know you'll say well it's not healthy hey, well then just go with it have some fast food romance have some home cooking but also from time to time have gourmet okay you just got to go gourmet that's where uh you know you, you pull out all the stops but i think the thing that i've learned is that with ladies and men we need to be patient and romance our ladies all day long if we want to have a fantastic finish but women maybe wives understand us men you know we don't always it doesn't take long for us we can get romantic we can get warm pretty quick and sometimes you just need to maybe understand that about us but you don't want all fast food and you don't want all home cooking and you certainly can't have gourmet all the time but we can surely have a blend can we not and that's what it is about men being microwaves and women are crock pots. It's really understanding each other's needs, being willing to meet each other's needs, be willing to um, give to the other person and be sensitive to the other person and watch your expectations. A word on expectations. You know, there's different types of expectations, but when we have expectations, there's, there's three things you can do with an expectation. You can, you can meet the expectation, you can compromise with the expectation, or you can reject it as being unreasonable. And men, I'll tell you this, I think sometimes being microwaves with a crock pot, we're being unreasonable. We're expecting our ladies, our wives, to warm up quickly like we do, and that's just not how it works. And then sometimes, ladies, you know, you might be expecting the man to go slow, and, it, it, and it's hard for him because he's been ready for, he was ready four hours ago, okay? But understanding the differences and embracing the difference, allowing the lady the, the luxury of, let's, let's go really slow. But sometimes, ladies, allow the man the luxury of, hey, we can be fast tonight. It's McDonald's. <laughs> it's home cooking or it's gourmet and I think the healthy way is to have a blend uh, of all three amen amen any uh, any questions about this you see understanding the physical and emotional needs and differences of your spouse will lead to great romance um, being able to talk about it and, and I will say this in communication we need to pick the right time to talk you know um, you need to have a quiet place when you can absolutely just open up and share share your feelings and being able to do it in a non uh, invasive way for instance you're trying to communicate your your physical and emotional needs just just speak words like this is what I feel this is what I believe this is what I like instead of the words like you need to do this for me you should do that for me I want you to do this well the moment you put that you word in there you're gonna put your spouse on the defense so let the focus just open yourself up and share your needs without trying to make it an attack on your spouse in the same way share what makes you happy and another healthy way to do this is something like hey honey you know when you do this 
I really feel this. And that's fair. Um, but you, you have to open up. You have to be transparent. And, and you have to be honest. But you have to at the same time know that we are different. God made us different. It's okay to be different. Somehow, with all our differences being from Venus and Mars and different planets, somehow, some way, we're going to make it because that's what God created us. And men, we need that difference that's in our wives desperately. And, and wives, you need the differences in your husband and you need that difference desperately. We need to embrace the differences, love the differences. But no, hey, I'm a microwave and my beautiful little wife, Christy, you know, she's a little crock pot, but not a crack pot, a crock pot. You gotta be careful with your, you know, your, your enunciation there. And, <laughs> and that's the way God made us. And it's a beautiful thing and it's a wonderful thing, but understanding this can really contribute to a healthy relationship. Got a comment from Alex. Uh, I'm in Orlando and nothing has really worked out here. I feel like I've exhausted my resources. I haven't even had a chance to try what you're talking about. I'm at a loss for how to create more relationship opportunity. What should I try? Well, I'll tell you what. Very interesting that you said that. The guy, is, see, if you're looking at your screen right now, the guy sitting between you and us is named Dr. Steve Whitman. Dr. Steve Whitman is the head of the Orlando area Christian Singles. In this little singles group, there's over 2,000 singles <laughs> in this group. And they, they're they from all churches all around. And he'd be a good person for you to talk to. Um, oh, 3,000 now, excuse me, 3,000. He's over 3,000 singles. Let me say this, Alex, because, you know, I'm really glad you brought that up. You know, I was a single father for a very long time. I didn't like being single. Nothing was working out for me. I, I was like you. And I went through a really bad divorce. And I was, uh, everything was struggling and um, nothing was just working. I didn't want to be single. I was lonely. I was especially, I was having problems. Holidays especially were very, very lonely for me. I was pastoring a church with nobody by my side and all this kind of stuff. And, so I looked and I looked and I looked and nothing worked out. And I tried all sorts of things and nothing really worked out. And one day, Alex, I, I said this prayer. I said, Lord, if you just want me to be single and live here in this house with this, me and my dog, I had this golden retriever, Collie. If you just want me to live in this house with this, me and my dog and I'll just, just minister and just do my job, if that's what you want, Lord, I'll do it. But Lord, I give you this desire. I let go. And I just hand this desire to you. And for some reason, I felt like I just took this weight off of me. I said, all right, God, I'll just give this to you. Within 30 days, he sent me a beautiful wife. But for me, it didn't happen until I let go. And I gave the whole thing over to God. I said, all right, God, I've been trying to do this on my own. I'm getting nowhere. I'm frustrated. I'm lonely. I give it to you, Lord. I can't I can't handle it. I'm just, I just, Lord, I release this to you. Whatever you want, Lord. I just, I give it to you. And he sent me a wife <laughs> almost immediately. Worked for me. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Steve is saying, uh, Alex, click this link. Okay. He gave you a link to this group, Alex. And then you also said, Alex, it seems like the arranged marriage with someone from another country is more probable. <laughs> Can you write that script of an arranged marriage? Can I write? <laughs> no, I can't write the script of an arranged marriage. I can't. But I know that when I was trying to make this thing happen, I was trying not to be single so hard. And I was 56 years old and uh, I had been married and, you know, I was divorced and eight, nine years by myself. Didn't like it. Uh, being single for some reason I wasn't handling it very well and I tried everything I could do and uh, different meetup groups and online that kind of stuff and again I released it and gave it over to God and he took care of it immediately and I have a beautiful wife I do but this OACS and Steve can be a really good connection for you they have a lot of uh, get-togethers and groups and it's an enormous group but they do a lot of fun stuff together uh, 
he gave you that meeting.com slash OACS, uh, if I can read it, OACSO8, is that right? Anyway, I hope that helps, Alex. I hope so. I'm glad you joined us. So, Lord, I praise that you just bring the right person for Alex. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, no, no more distractions, no more hindrances, no more deceptions. The right person, in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what happens, Alex. They'll, Satan will send you a lot of counterfeits. And, uh, and you have to kind of wade through all the counterfeits before you find the real deal. Yeah, looking in the right place is a key, Liz says. There's something about our culture that may really screw up the formula of what a healthy relationship be in a lot of uh, cases. Our culture reinforces a lot of the wrong values. Well, I think that could be argued, but I know when I was in Indonesia, I really did appreciate their culture and the way the ladies were over there. But um, yeah, that's, that's a broad topic. I think our culture can incubate some bad things, but also there can be some very good things too. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I know, but don't give up, man. It's not, it's not that bad. It's not that negative. It really isn't. I've met some really wonderful, loving Christian women in my life. They're just incredible. Incredible. Call me an optimist. Man. Well, um, that's really about all I had to share, unless there's any other comments. Alex, uh, please follow up with Steve on this uh that link he put up there on the chat box um, and again I just I encourage you to pray um, again one of the biggest things that Satan will do is he'll send you counterfeits he'll put counterfeit relationships in your life to try to hurt you now, I, I guarantee you you've probably been hurt by these counterfeits you know what I mean when I say counterfeit seem like the right person but turned out to be nothing but a heartbreaker and uh, you, you've got to wait and pray for the right person and uh, it's worth it. It is worth it. And they're out there. All right, guys. I appreciate you tonight. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, uh, Linda, Liz, Mary. Thank you, everybody who will be listening. Amen. Um, yeah, I can see that, um, Alex. Um, let me just say this. I'll just be open with you. I actually um, did e-harmony but I did e-harmony with a lot of prayer and I met a lot of counterfeit with e-harmony but I also ended up meeting my wife through e-harmony but it's still I did not meet her to I released the whole thing over to God and literally the very last person I met on e-harmony was my wife and it's been pretty amazing but I'm not plugging that I'm just saying God can work in funny ways amazing ways yeah all right. Well, I'm getting ready to log out. I thank you for tuning in, Alex. Um, I feel for you, man. I've been where you are. Of course, I'm a little older than you, I think. <laughs> you know, probably a lot older. <laughs> but uh, but I do I do appreciate you. Um, yeah, yeah, Alex, uh, when I went on the eHarmony thing, I got overwhelmed by it. Uh, honestly, there were so many matches. I had to wade through a whole lot of stuff. I almost just totally forgot all about it and just gave up on it and all of a sudden I met my wife and she was sent by God but you got to pray man he's he's got he'll send you the person that'll come when you least expect it I promise he will but you got to turn it over if you don't turn it over and try to make it happen you run into problems all right thank you Steve thanks Liz thanks Alex thank you everybody I appreciate you very much and as we always say in the end of our little webinars, good night, John Boy, good night, Jim Bob, <laughs> good night, Mary Lou, good night, America.